Okay, hey, we are live. Welcome to On Set. I made it very official that time. You like that? I, like I am Daniel Norton with Erica. Hi. We got Seth over here on the Mighty Mix. And we got Dave in the back to help me because I'm probably going to be in trouble. All right. Oh, there we go. That's my favorite. That's my favorite part of this. Good? All right. Now I know what I sound like. I apologize. <laughs> no, so anyways, uh, <laughs> Flashpoint. <laughs> so Flashpoint, Adorama's uh, house brand, is doing a, a revamp, right? And uh, they've launched a new Instagram, Flashpoint, oh, Instagram.com slash Flashpoint Lighting. Go ahead and follow them over there for awesome content. That sound right? All right, so I'm not sure. No, there'll probably be cool stuff over there. Right now, it looks like they've got a handful of images. They look pretty cool. What we're going to do, though, uh, since they said, hey, Daniel, that's my name, you want to shoot some stuff with the flashpoint lights? And I was like, yeah, I do, actually. <laughs> and then they were like, what would you like? And I was like, hmm, what have you got? And I said, they said, a para? I said, a para what? That was a lot of setup for that joke, yeah. which wasn't very good. Okay, so anyways, yeah, this is one of those modifiers people ask about a lot. They're always like, hey, Daniel, what's the difference between a para? Hey, what about a para, 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 para? Bum, bum, bum. And whenever a company offers to let you borrow a para, always get the biggest one. Because big lights are impressive. <laughs> right, well, the thing is, right, so if you think about it, right, the size of your light source dictates the hardness and softness, right? So the bigger the light source, the softer it's going to be. However, if you're using something like an umbrella, or in this case a para, where you can change how much of the, the kind of the reflector is being hit by light, you can effectively, it's not exactly that, but you can effectively change the size of the source. So in other words, when I have this in really close like this, only part of the interior is being lit and reflective for the most part. So it's going to create a, a bit of a punchier, harder light. When I slide this out, it's going to fill the entire umbrella area, which is going to create a bigger light. right? In all cases, because it's silver, it's going to be specular and punchy. This does come with a diffusion panel, which we'll probably use it at some point. But I, I want to use it like this, because I feel like this is the feel of a para to me. When I think para, I think punchy, silver. right? And what we can do, what, what kind of makes this fun or, or useful is that if you want to use this modifier in different situations and kind of repeat certain looks, you can do it by moving the light source closer or further away, but you can also do it by zooming, if you will, this middle part, right? So if I want, let's say I'm in a small space, but I want the para look and I want it to be the small kind of the hard light source, the sunlight look, I can go right into the center of it. But if, I want to, if I'm outside and I have space and I want to cover a long distance and I want to still have that hard look, I can use the bigger part of it kind of measure that out. So that's kind of part of the fun of it. Um, I think, yep. Can they charge more for the bigger light? You can definitely charge more for a bigger light. And also, the more you say the word parabolic, <laughs> the more you can charge. And also, the more ribs. <laughs> OK. <laughs> so also, every para comes with this escape patch. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> if you're inside the para and you need to get out, I let's. Right, if you can squeeze. No, what that's for is your cable, because what I probably would use this for, or more likely, uh, would be a great unit for it, but I didn't ask for that, because why well, would I ask for the right thing? Would be the 1200 car. It's just called Flashpoint 1200, I believe. It's kind of a pack and head system. The reason why that's a little bit better for this is because the head itself is smaller. And why that's relevant is because when we go to slide this thing in and out with the large mono light like we have on there, it's going to be a little bit more difficult. But it still works. We, we tried it. So far, so good. <laughs> so, so yeah, let, let's mess around with this a little bit. I also got a strip box because whenever you can have two lights, you should have two lights. Right. You know. OK, I got my uh, Studio Gray. Is that what call this? Studio Gray, fashion. fashion Gray, background from Savage, Focus Gray, rather. Yeah, I don't think it's fashion. Fashion is working there. Fashion Gray is dark. I'm fashion. Yeah. Erica is Fashion Erica, Focus Gray. I'm going to use the light. Yep. Okay, so I'm going to do it again this time. On this one? Yeah. Okay. 
All right, I'm going to, oh, I could put it on the other side, I guess. Eric actually looks good from both sides. <laughs> Notice I have my rolly sand here. Okay. I'm going to light from this side. So whenever you're deciding what side to light from, look at your subject, figure out what their best side is, and then look to see where the cameras that are streaming on YouTube are and put the light on the other side. All right. All right. Now, this light source is bigger than Erica. So it should be soft, right? But as I noted, I probably should have shown this. In fact, I will show it right now. All right, I'm going to turn on the who's you, what's it. And I'm going to press this button here. Did the modeling light turn on? No, it did not. Hold on. Seth showed me how to do this. I will figure it out. You want to go over there? I'm going to press the modeling light. Here we, nope, that's the wrong button. Oh, there we go, mod. Did the light come on? Yeah. Aha, it did. Perfect. I did. OK. Let's roll this thing again. If you notice, Yeah, I want to go 100%. You want to do it? I got it. Oh, good, good. You press the button with the light bulb on it. Okay. We can see, as I noted, that primarily just the center part of this is lit. That means that, I mean, yes, some light is hitting out here too, but primarily this is our light source, which means that it's actually relatively small. So we can assume, we have to assume at this point because we haven't tried it yet, right, that this should be relatively hard on Erica because this is actually smaller than Erica. Right? So let's start that way. <laughs> okay, do you remember one satellite dishes were that big? <laughs> All right. <laughs> that looks pretty good. Cool shadow on the wall. We've got Erica there. She's looking good. Now, the other question that I always get asked is, why don't you use a light meter, Daniel? And that's because I usually use the TTL in my strobes. But for you guys, I decided to go with a non-TTL version. I may have also put the wrong SKU number in. <laughs> okay. So I'm gonna, I've set my light meter at 100 ISO. One two hundredth of a second, which are the baseline uh, readings for my camera, right? The lowest ISO with the normal range, the fastest shutter speed in the uh, synchron the fastest sync speed, without using high speed sync. And I'm going to point it towards the light. Oh, eleven two. All right, I'm at one eighth power. So I'm going to press this button, and since it's, I only want to be f eight, I'm going to bring it down to a sixteenth power. That should. Point the meter at the light. Yeah, I'm pointing the meter at the light. Just like Gavin or Mark, one of those two. I don't know. I can't remember who was that, that argument, but whatever. Towards the light it is today. You can point towards the camera, of course, but I didn't have a camera. All right. Well, this is. This is that demo that I'm doing all the stuff that you guys ask for all the time. I'm shooting with a para. I'm using a light meter. I have a sound. No, this is a Nikon. I'm going to shoot full length. <laughs> oh, OK. I'm setting my camera correctly. OK, here we go. OK. I mean, I wish you guys could see how good this is. OK. There it is. Oh, Erica. Looking good there. Looking punchy. We see that light, right? Look at that, how crispy it is. You know, when you're making chocolate chip cookies, some people like 
the chewy ones. The store-bought ones that are called chewy are basically just not cooked enough. Right? Some people who are smart like the crispy ones. All right, so anyways, we've got basically a crispy light on her. We can see texture in her uh, sweater. We can see specularity. Look at her lips. Look at the makeup. The titanium dioxide is reflecting in the makeup. Uh, what? Lens. Landon? What lens? What lens? <laughs> what lens am I using? This is the 24 to 70 millimeter F4 Nikon Z. One, two, three, four, six. The last part I made up. Yeah, that's the lens, 2470F4. I'm shooting at 50, I'm guessing. It doesn't say. 50 millimeters is roughly where I said. But we can see, right? Large light. Hard light. Large light. Hard light. Now, let me slide the shaft. This is where it gets a little weird. Oh, oh, that worked. OK. I'm going to slide this all the way down to 40. Yeah, what the numbers are are basically you measure the height of your subject. No, I don't know. I'm assuming they're degrees. Although I don't know if that's true. That's probably true. OK. But we can see by doing that now that this is very much filled up. All right. Taking my light meter again. I mean, I could just do a little math or, or guess, but I'm not going to guess. We don't guess. Seven. Was eight. Now it's seven. Seven? Is that, is that like a third of a stop? We're going to guess. <laughs> no, we're going to go 16 and a third. I want to bring up the power a third of a stop because we want to be eight. Eight, there we go. I'm just saying numbers, like it doesn't actually mean anything. No, I just, I turned the power up a little bit because obviously when I move the light further away, it's got more distance to travel, it's covering more surface area. So this should give us a little bit of a softer light. It's still not gonna be super soft. It's always gonna be a little punchy. All right, let's take a look. So, light's in the same place. Erica's in the same place. We can see the, the shadow edge is a bit softer here. We can see it's a little more gentle, right? We can see even the specularity is down a bit, right? Because more surface area. Remember that your specular highlight is essentially a reflection of your light source, so a bigger light source. We can still see texture because it's still a little punchy, but if we compare that shoulder to this, to this shoulder, right, we can see the difference. So, what's that? All right, we've got questions. All right, one. one. How do we, do we have a way to simulate that parabolic with just a 60 centimeter umbrella? OK, can we uh, simulate this with a 60 centimeter umbrella? No. I mean, you could simulate the big part. What makes a para a para, although people love to put out the, the, the part that the, the ribs, which you can charge for, it's really mostly about the moving the head in and out to, to, to uh, you know, and it's designed to do that. So yes, I can take any umbrella and slide the head in and out, but it's not designed to reflect differently. This is designed that way by the that shape of it. So it's not exactly the same, no. And then is that a true parabolic? Is this a true parabolic? I think you should actually go into your random parabolic. Uh, I mean, parabolic is, just means even and round. All umbrellas are parabolic. That's my rant. I'm not going to get into the whole science of it because I'm not a scientist. What I will say, that's it. What, that, 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 well, I might get diverted. If you're saying, why is this company charging me so much for some blah, 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 because I can get this one for only $400, there's reasons, right? There's a reason why people charge different amounts for different things. Does this do kind of a, this, a similar thing? Yeah, it does. Is it as refined? Is it as perfect probably as a $5,000 one? I'm going to say no, you know? Is it $400? <laughs> Versus $5,000? Yeah, right? So if you want the things that you're putting out here, instead of looking at two things and going, well, is this this? What do you need? What do you need your tool to do? If you need to do what I just showed you, what you can do here, then this is the tool for you. You know, that's what I would say about that. I wouldn't compare this to something else. It's not a fair comparison. What's, 
Am I shooting JPEGs? I don't think so. Oh. Well, that's weird. Good catch, John. I don't even know how to shoot JPEGs. I mean, you did actually factor and reset a camera. Yeah, you're on a, you're on JPEG. Oh, okay. Sorry yeah, you know. That. Thanks. Um, well, that's weird. Then the other, the other question. Geez, this is really an interesting one. Okay. Um, interesting question. Well, no, I mean, it's just interesting how much questions are going to be. Oh yeah. Um, you use a custom white balance and you set a white balance to flash. When okay. You're using uh, normally, I use a Kelvin temperature with with my Pro Photo strobes uh, of five thousand, which I got from Seth. <laughs> um, However, this, I, I, I did a test shot when I first got this in here, and it was a little, on, it felt too blue for me, so I raised it up to 5200. What do I normally do? If it's a, a commercial job and it really matters, I use a white balance a chart, a card, I photograph it. If I'm just shooting generally, I usually leave it at 5000. Okay, so Dylan says all girls are not kind of all like that specific shape. Okay. I don't know what to say about that. Thanks, Dylan. You just shrug. I, I, okay. Oh, I mean, I guess you could have a square umbrella. That's true. All right. <laughs> Hold on. It just hurts you. All right, so I moved it in closer now and bigger. So I want to show you we can actually work with this as kind of a big light source. Oh, I got to remeter it. We're going to remeter it. By the way, that's the black square. That I, I didn't do that at the beginning. Was it? No. Okay. Are you gonna turn it on and off on the trigger or something? You know what I'm saying? No, 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 I, I'm doing it for the. Alright. Hey. Right. Hey. Right. True. Right. Okay. So now we're closer, right? We've got it uh, zoomed to the wider setting, right? And we've moved it in closer, right? We're using it more like a traditional softbox here. And what we're going to get still is this light that's really kind of, it starts to become very creamy and wrap around. We can still see a little bit of edge to it, right? but we can see how nice that is on the skin tone. So we can get a lot of different looks, just like any box, right? And remember, I'm not using any diffusion on this right now. That's one of the advantages of using a large light source is that you can get this soft light look and still have that kind of punchy contrast because we're much more specular with the silver interior. But now let's do the same thing. I'm gonna, we're just gonna walk through a few things. I'm gonna zoom it back out. I mean, if you're gonna pay all this money for a parabolic, you might as well. Exactly. Oh man, all right. So I get my exercise. There we go. Whew. It is definitely brand new. It's stiff. All right, here we go. I'm going to put it at zero. Whew. All right, so you've got a lot of numbers on here, but it didn't come with instructions. But actually, what's nice about having things numbered is I'm sure it actually does, it's probably degrees, but what you can do though is make notes of what you like, right? When you first get it, uh, a modifier like this that has these things. Same thing is true with like your reflectors and stuff, that, like profile reflectors, for instance, that when you use them, look at what you're doing so you can make them repeatable. This is kind of one of those things we want to be able to do as photographers is repeat our looks. I probably should have got two remotes. If you're going to get a, a non-TTL light, you get two remotes. You don't keep taking it off. Seven again. I don't know if I don't remember. No, it's just, it likes to be seven. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, all right, so we want it to be eight, so we're going to turn it up. I'm just doing one read. Yeah, what do you mean, like on our body? I could do that, I suppose. Yeah, I mean, I'm just reading it on our face. That's all I really care about. But we can see how even it is. Let's see. It makes a, it makes a satisfying sound. Yeah. I mean, I don't know so much about the light. <laughs> 
Yeah. All right, well, eight, nine, ten. All right, so. <laughs> well, I mean, we zoomed all the ways to, to tight, so it's not going to be even because it's, it's a smaller light source, right? So having a quick fall off. <laughs> there we go. OK. See, now I zoomed it back to the tight, tighter spot. Look at how punchy that is. Again, I haven't moved the light. And believe it or not, it's still Erica, right? Different look, right, with the same light. This is really what we're able to achieve. Now, I think most people looking to get a parabolic or thinking about them, this is the look you want. This like tighter look that still has this wrap is, is really the kind of the look I think people think of with parabolic. And if you're going to back it up, like let's say we want to get more coverage, we can zoom it back or move it back, I should say. No, no, and then we can zoom the head forward. Now I just moved it back like five feet, so I'm going to move this to 15 because that seems right. And <laughs> Honestly, there was no book. I, I don't know. You ever see The Greatest American Hero? <laughs> they gave me the parabolic with no, with no video, with no with book. No, but what we're going to do is we're making this bigger, but we're backing it up. Oh, oh. One stop again. Everything I do just like one stop. All right, so that's eight plus a third. If I want to add one stop of light, I'm going to go to. Actually, I'll just lay out a little bit. I'll leave it right. All right. Do, 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 do. All right, so I'm going to, it's, it's reading eight now. So we're going to use this. Again, I backed the light up, but I then zoomed the head to give me more, to effectively make my source larger. So we should, in theory, get a similar look. Yeah, we did. Boop. Boop. Right? Similar. Similar look. Essentially, I move my light back, uh, you know, what, three, four, five feet? Oh, I just, my voice changed there. Must be computer. But that I was able to change the interior of, uh, of the light by zooming the, the, the head, thus keeping the same, the same light, essentially, the same feel of the light. That's correct. I'm keeping the power of the light consistent. I'm just zooming it. So I'm, zo I'm moving the light further back. And I'm zooming it so that effectively it's roughly the same size as it was when it was closer to her. Then I'm just adjusting the power of the light to make sure I have the same exposure. <laughs> Does that make sense? Yeah. Math. I mean, to do something like this without a parabolic, without, a, without one of these guys, you would need to have multiple softboxes. It's like the equivalent of using like a two-foot octa here and then a three-foot octa here. Right? You can think of it like that, or umbrella, or however you want to look at it. There is a slight difference, of course, because the inverse square law, right? So we're going to definitely have uh, you know, different, slightly different fall off. Like if we look at our shadow area, it is a little bit brighter on this one because it wraps around a bit. And then also we've got um, the light being further away slightly changes its angle, so it's not exactly the same, but it does get you pretty close. So pretty cool. All right, let's bring it back around. <laughs> this is all about me just moving this thing back and forth. All right. <laughs> this, this, is the, this is a super boom stand. Yeah, all right. No, you're fine. Don't worry about it. You wanted a 10, right? All right. Don't, don't worry about it. Perfect. Let's say we want to put the light next to Erica. There it is, right? One of the great things about being a photographer is that you can use absurdly large light sources just to show off. You know, a lot of times people come to my studio, I'll be like, yeah, look, you know, look at my para. It's 70 inches. <laughs> no, I'm going to put this around because I want to kind of have it wrap around from the side and create a lot of contrast, but still be, I, I put it, at, it's at the 15 zoom, right? Yeah. So we're going to move in. 20. Not bad. Well, 20 is the, what, it's, what it's asking for, but we don't want to be 20, so we're going to turn the power down. Uh, 
The reason why I stick with the white balance. I guess because I'm noticing it's showing on the Kelvin setting and not flat. Yeah. Right. So the reason that I'm sticking with this white balance is because I've done a little bit of experimentation. And I found that for my style, I like the way this looks. <laughs> the, the, the thing is, you have two things, right? You've got, you're doing client work, or you're shooting for yourself, or you're doing client work based on a style that you've, uh, you've created, right? You've got all these different things that could be going on. And if you are doing something that's based on your own style, then you can essentially do what you think works best. So what that means in long and short is that if Erica hired me to, to shoot this and I need to make sure the color was exactly right, I would shoot a color chart to make sure I had the exact color. If, if Erica hired me to shoot this because she liked my style and all my images, she was like, oh man, I was looking at your images on Instagram. <laughs> Daniel Norton, you can follow me over there. Uh, <laughs> then I would shoot it the way I shoot, which I like it like this. So is there a reason? I like it like this. It's got a little cool. Now, it also depends on the person's skin tone. Erica, by her nature, has a warm skin tone. So this give, lets her skin tone kind of pop out. It doesn't look overly cool for her, but the background gets a bit of a coolness to it. You can look anywhere you want, but towards the light is better. <laughs> All right. Now we've moved the light super close to her, and we can see we're doing, this is called split lighting. The only time that you ever use split lighting is when you're teaching photography and you need to show split lighting. <laughs> now, we can see that even with this light being uh, right here, right, it's big. Now, because I have it zoomed, it's not as big as it could be, right? So we're getting this very, very shadowy side. Now, if I take this, it's exciting, and I adjust my number here. I got 15 in here. I'm going to slide it forward. 40. Okay, good. Now I'm making my source larger, right? Boy, there's a lot of like zooming this thing in and out, isn't there? <laughs> I think that like in normal use, once you get a feel for this thing, you're not going to be doing this a million times. I'm just trying to show you guys different varieties of zooming. You know, all right, so I'm getting five. So I'm going to turn my power up again. Because remember, when I moved it like this, even though the light itself is physically closer to her, it's got to come all the way back here and bounce around and come back out. And also, it's covering larger surface areas. So I got to give myself a little more juice. Juicy juice. I like the berry one, mixed berry. So if you're getting any juicy juice, you get any mixed berry, I like that. Yep, the giant can that you got to make two holes in. Your All right. <laughs> you do have to put two holes. All right. At the air hole, otherwise it doesn't come out. I could move it closer. I am stretching. I'm just going to move this so I hopefully don't kill myself here. All right. Lots of wires going on. Why don't you use the wireless tethering? Well, tether tools, if you're out there and you want to send me a wireless tethering, I'm willing to give it a shot.
I'm like leaning on a leg. Hey there. All right. <laughs> okay, so the equipment for this is going to be super simple. I've got my Profoto B10, my three foot Octa, as I mentioned, my favorite modifier for a single light portrait, and I'm going to also use a grid. Got to add the grid. No. So I say, I put that bleep on everything. You're buzzing? Okay, because that means there's not a signal coming through. Okay, I hear you. I got you. You got me? Oh, yeah, there it is. I got you. Whatever Dave did worked. I touched it. <laughs> Dave touched it. All right, so don't touch anything else. I have a magic touch. Yes. Okay. Well, we were worried how we were going to fill an hour, so. You know. Well, there you go, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed this. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, let's just roll back to this for one second. Okay, so if you remember, we had that nice punchy look. Oh, God, what's happening? They get the three-foot octa thing. This is like, here's, a, here's, a, here's my three-foot octa that I'm talking so much. <laughs> there was no three-foot octa there. <sighs> All right, so I've got the large light source close to Erica. It's zoomed out to 40. I think you have to go over with Yeah, I'm going to. Yeah. We're going to start here. Okay. Oh, no, now I'm not getting a connection to the... What the heck is happening here? Oh, you're not tethered? All of a sudden, I'm not tethered now. Yeah. There we go. OK. Hey, welcome to On Set. I'm Dan. <laughs> All right, so. <laughs> All right, so right now, we've got the parrot next to Erica. I'm zoomed out to the, the widest position. Actually, go further, a little further back. To the, to, we'll go right up against the wall. Yeah, we want to really show that. All right, so if she's here, this thing now is filling most of the, the, the parabolic. So it's going to come across. It's going to wrap around and create a nice kind of soft wrap around light. And then we're going to come back and zoom it in, and we're going to do a punchier light source. Whew. Nice. Oh, that's actually really nice. I should, I should get one of these. Not bad. Turkish first day. All right, so we've got this nice light wrapping around, right? It's got a little like, hmm, but a little bit of, ooh, just like that. Now, if we want to give it like some, you know, we can come over here. I'm at 40 now. I'm going to roll this back. Oh, it is getting easier. Maybe I'm getting stronger. All right. I'm going to bring it back to five. I mean, I could bring it to zero, but ah, let's bring it to zero. Let's show the extremes. Nobody ever uses the middle. <laughs> In a demo, anyways. All right. Now, whew. we got this. We got this, I swear. <laughs> Yeah. My demo this morning was a mess. Here's the mess. Yeah. That's all right, though. We will persevere. Luckily, we have Erica here. <laughs> Erica is not a mess. And not only that, we had delicious vegan tacos. Yeah. Yeah. Did you like that cauliflower? I did. Yeah, good. Yeah. yeah, the cauliflower is good. I had sweet potato. I do like sweet potato. All right, so keeping the exposure the same with the head zoomed back. Put my head zoomed back. Yeah. 
Right? Right? Gentle. Gentle. Right? And this is what we're going to get. This is, this is basically a harder, punchier, more specular source, even though the para is still the same size, right? Because we're filling a different amount of it, and it's really designed for this. And like I said, you can zoom an umbrella to do different coverage, but it doesn't generally change it the same way that the para does. This is, this is a, it's a paradox. Not really. All right. I tried. I was, I was trying to, I was trying to make it work. All right. All right, hold on. When, when all things start to fail, we got to do Rembrandt lighting. All right, so you know Rembrandt. He was this guy, Italian, I guess. And he was like, hey, when you're going to set up a portrait, put your strobe kind of over here, and it'll give you a nice light. If you want to talk about the internet, tell me Right. Come closer. Yeah, Rembrandt was all about getting them all close to the strobe. There we go. Go back. No, right here. The perfect. Right there. Perfect. Good. All right. I'm not going to do Rembrandt lighting. I'm not authorized. I did somehow manage to bring her to exactly the same exposure, though, which is, you know, for, fortunate for me. All right, so you're good. You're going to look right at me. And you're going to be like, Rembrandt. There we go. That is a crispy. Now, that's pretty good. But if you really want good light, you must raise the light to seven centimeters above the nose. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Sorry. I'm not going to make jokes like that because people will actually think I'm being serious. There we go. I am raising it slightly, though, so I can get more light on her pretty brown eyes. Look at the detail in those eyelashes. What's that? Am I showing your eye? That you have? I'm showing Erica's got a little eye thing going on. Don't worry, we'll retouch that. All right, everybody's calling for the Brooklyn Reflector. I can feel it. That's not bad, right? Nope, this is Brooklyn 2.0. It's not quite a Queen's Reflector, but it's getting there. Wow. You know, you lost internet again. <laughs> I did live in Queens for a minute. Bam. That's how you can spend a bunch of money, set up a parabolic <laughs> reflector, set everything up awesome, and then make it look like every other picture ever. <laughs> no, it still has a nice kind of uh, punchiness to it. It's just too much. That's a joy. Vanessa's got a parabolic, I'm sure. Sure, she does. No, she does. Everybody in New Jersey has one. <laughs> there we go. They get the room for it exactly. So here, here I just bounced in a little bit, just a little bit. Yeah, that's nice. Not, not bad. I'm gonna use a silver one. All right, this reflector is the highly anticipated silver reflector. Now, if I put it too close, it's going to be bad. So I really got to stretch. Whew. Hold on, I got to turn my remote on. There we go. Remotes always work better when they're on. Although, if you're making shots without the reflector, without the remote on, oh, oh, interesting. Interesting. That was pretty far away. Yeah, that was too far away. <laughs> you can just see a tiny bit of it right there. It's so little. All right, maybe that was too far. I was exaggerating it probably too much. There we go. So a little silver, a little specularity. Pow. 
And if you want your catch lights to look really good, you can cut the reflector into like a star shape. Oh my. <laughs> All right, sorry. Okay, so let's actually, this is pretty nice. Very nice, right? Erica thinks it's pretty nice. Let's add another light because more lights, more money, right? I happen to have over here, uh, I didn't even say what the first light was, did I? This is a flash point. Six, oh. This is a flash point. Where am I need to put that? Outside the giant thing. This is a flash point. 600. It's the same light here, but I didn't say what it was earlier. 600 FP or something? It's called. Um, uh, Explorer. Explorer 600. Pro, pro, pro. pro. This is the Pro. What? All right, I have it in a strip. In this strip box comes with this little beauty dish thing here, the, the deflector. So that way, whenever you're doing a live stream, people can ask you, is that like a beauty dish? <laughs> like, it's literally the only thing that's made. No, I'm just kidding. No, what that does is it allows us to use the silvered reflector, uh, the silvered box without any diffusion, without getting a hot spot in the center. So let's try that, because I like the little kind of silver poppy we got going on. All right. Is that where you're going to be? Move a little bit more forward, I think. There you go. All right. It's not a pro. <laughs> this is the pro, but no TTL. Non-TTL pro. For you pros out there that don't believe in TTL, non-TTL pro. Not TTL Pro R2, so. Yeah. Oh, shoot. It's pretty nice. Oh, never mind. Uh-oh. I thought you were, you were the battery. Man. Oh, oh. No, no, my battery's not dying. I got the battery. I'm just waiting for the next thing to go down. <laughs> I know, right? We got a lot of stuff going on. All right, so, A. I'm going to hold down the mode button, which will make it turn off, I think. No, I'm going to press the mode button twice, and I'll do it. Okay, now I'm going to go to B. Press the mode button. All right. Yep, I just wanted to. This is only my like, third time ever using this. All right, it's very user friendly. All right, so I'm going to go to 30 second power. My old studio used to be on 32nd Street. No, that's not right. No, it's not right at all. That would be like a, the Diamond District or something. Yeah, I'm not. Uh, I'm not throwing any diamonds around. I like the sound that makes. Yeah, it's cute. Can they hear that? Hold on. Ding. Yeah. It's like ringing a bell. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Every time a bell rings. I like that. Ring the bell, girl. Are you going to swap your doorbell with this? My doorbell. <laughs> yes. When somebody presses my doorbell, it's going to be like, ding. I really like that. Yeah, it's got like a pop, pop, pop song going. Okay, but then, all right, so I'm just firing this backlight now because one light at a time. I've set the exposure to, to eight. Ooh, that felt good. Well, all right. Been on the nose way too much. A little on the nose, as they say. Actually, just... All right, I'm going to turn on the main light now. It's part of my contract that I have to use more than one light. Oh, oh it's doing that thing where it does, okay. When my nose starts pressing things, there we go. I really like the way that sounds. It's like, wah, wah. All right, that's not terrible. It's a little much. Something's wrong. You know what's wrong? Yeah. No, you're perfect. So this is at zero. Whenever you're doing this kind of setup, you always want to move this to at least 15. No, the reason why I'm moving it to 15, serious, on the more serious note, is I want to basically, again, make the light source slightly larger. I'm softening it up a bit. I feel like the edge of it, is a little, the edge of that shadow is a little bit too, too harsh. I did not adjust the power because I felt like it was a little bright anyways. Oh, right, there we go. Look at that. Look at that. The whole thing's a little hot. It is, right? 
This whole thing's a little bit hot, but it's, oh, actually, I can go like this. I can hit all, and then I can dial the whole thing down. Look at the detail. Furry. No, I'm being serious. Look at how nice that is. Because, again, this light feels like a soft, pretty light, but yet it's got this detail that really rips out of it. And this is why you see people use it for, oh, he's throwing the word out there, fashion. Yes. Because we can get the detail. There it is. That's right. We'll send that one home to my mama. All right, we got the specularity. Yeah. This is. That's true. Also very good for hairstyles because it's got this nice kind of punch to it. I'm trying not to show that Erica's got a little red in her eye. <laughs> we wouldn't want people to know that she's not perfect. I mean, she is perfect. What can we say? All right, a little get a little light on her nose there, but that's okay. That was my fault. Actually, I love how you are, so I'm just going to change the light. I'm all about the specularity today. All right, here we go. Specularity. Blah, blah, blah. Good, good, good. Oftentimes, you have to do three shots because... That's how you get the cheekbone. That was like nothing. It wasn't anything. I was going to say it was like karate or something, but this is not really. Anybody watching would probably know that. Look at how nice that gray background looks, too. Aha! Uh -huh. Put it. Oh, behind me! Yeah. You could do that. Let's do it. Oh All right, guys. No matter how small your studio is, always use the biggest possible light source. Not bad, right? Oh, this is perfect. It's just really important to take, uh, you know, a, a beautiful model in a in a studio and then use the flattest possible light. Why am I turning it off here? I can do it from the remote. Okay. B, hold down mode. No, nope, press mode. There he goes. All right, here we go. A. We got this. We got this. Oh I'll just say, back in the day, we used to have a system, and then we'd just be like, pop it, pop it, pop it. No, down a 10. Down a 10. <laughs> down a 10. Right, down. <laughs> now we have the remote to do that, so photography becomes a lonely <laughs> endeavor. All right. All right, set five, so six. You ever notice that when Gavin does this, he goes, and then it's perfect? It's like, he, uses these he actually knows how to use it. <laughs> you don't even like that, though. Yeah, yeah, no, I don't. I'm just, I'm just five, six, seven, eight. <laughs> up a tenth. <laughs> up a tenth. Nope, down a tenth. What? Hold on, what? All right, here we go. Oh, that felt good. Yeah, there you go. Perfect. Like I couldn't have done that with a speed light on top of my camera. <laughs> really? No, now, if you want to put it behind you like this, typically this is when you want to use as a fill light. So in that case, I wouldn't want it to be so, remember, I always want my fill to be larger than my key. Or generally, so I'm going to push it forward to 40. And now this is going to be my fill light. 
and let's make a soft, uh, let's make a key to shape her. And conveniently, I have this. I bet you didn't know you could use a strip light as a key. Well, well, yeah, if you watched Seth's live stream, you would have known that. Now, pro tip, never put it perfectly straight. There we go. Always a little bit. If you're being photographed by a photographer and their strip bank is perfectly straight, I would, you know, we need to question that. All right, I'm going to take this light because I want it to be my shadow, and I'm going to turn it down two stops because I want my shadow to be about two stops less than my key. So it's at 16 plus 7 tenths, so I'll bring it down to 64 plus 7 tenths. Yeah, that seems right. Okay. Then I'm going to go to B. I'm going to turn it on. And this one I'm going to then, well, I'm going to turn A off for a second. When you're metering your lights, you want to try to meter them separately. You know, in this situation, because one's going to fill in on the other. There we go. All right, here we go. Oh, 14. Exactly what I was looking for. <laughs> Gavin, why am I getting 14? <laughs> 10, well, we're getting closer. All right. Perfect. I don't know if you guys noticed, but I've been shooting at 9 today. All right, I am, I am joking about the strip light. You can use it straight if you'd like. So... <laughs> right, not, so, okay, right, because she, so here's the thing, right? <laughs> the reason why you would turn the strip light, I mean, I'm, I'm making a little joke, but the reason why you would turn it is because her, her face is like this, right? And if I want, I can actually use the strip light to wrap the light around by just turning it slightly, right? Her face is lopsided. Right. That's how we get light on the other side of her face. I'm here every week, or every, every, every Tuesday. <laughs> all right, all right, let's just do a test of this one. They're asking if the flash is one to one ratio. The flash is not one to one. The flash is going to be uh, one to two. All right, so that is just the key light. Just the strip, which is the key light. Now I'm going to add the para, which is two stops. Less powerful, in theory. There we go. Now you're saying, Daniel, that looks almost exactly the same. <laughs> but no, it does not. This is just that, with um, the shadows just falling off wherever the, the shadows want to go. This, I'm controlling my shadow. Right? I'm putting it in this dark area so that I, and you can see it's filled in nicely. And what that serves from, what that does for me is it allows me to have her turn however I want. I mean, she can turn really far this way if she wants. And still the shadow will have detail because I've got my octagon filling in. No, not octagon, sorry, parabolic filling in. What if I was shooting two people? I probably wouldn't use a strip box as the key, that's for sure. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I'm curious. When somebody asks a question like, "What if you were shooting two people?" Like, what, what do you mean? If I want to shoot a, a flat shot just to get them even, then I could just do what I did earlier, which was this, right? If I wanted something more dramatic like this, I would need to use probably two lights. If I had two people like this, I would just take two strips, put one lighting each of the people, right? That's one way to do it. It really depends on how you want those two people to be. Maybe they're back to back. Maybe they're front to front. Maybe they're, they never see eye to eye. <laughs> What's that? Did you that up? I did just straighten it, I know. <sighs> no, well, well, I don't want to confuse people. All right, and again, because we have this fill, like, we can do whatever we like. So if you turn and face this light and do a profile, because you know that I have to do a profile, because that's what I do. Eric, <laughs> Eric was like, 
I'm not going to get out of the sheet without doing at least one profile. I can buy one no. No. Even though I'm doing it on the side with the eye with the thing, I know, sorry. That's okay. And there we go, right? Drama for your mama. We're filled in. Now, I will say this. That is a little low. If there was a couple, would I put a strip on each side? Maybe. It depends on how you want it to look. I mean, if you wanted this look on each of them, then yes, you would put a strip on the other side. If you wanted them to look like it was more natural, then I would use a bigger light from one side that would cover both of them. And I would feather it off to make it more even. I mean, honestly, if I was shooting a couple, I probably wouldn't use a strip as my key light. I mean, I'm using it because I have it sitting there. Um, what I did there, though, if you noticed, I looked at this and I could see the triangle from her nose. This was a uh, equilateral triangle, and I wanted to. That's like isosceles. Right, I want isosceles. <laughs> so, like I, this is like here, right? So I brought it down, not quite Rembrandt, but getting there. No, I raised the light source to get that feel because it feels more natural, right? You don't. Whether or not it is natural, it feels more natural to have the light coming from above. But if I was photographing two of Erica, I probably would not use this as my key light. Instead, I mean, it's weird, right? It's like, oh, there's two people here. Huh. I have this monster light. Let's imagine this two of Erica. If I keep this far enough away that I can keep them on the same, more or less the same plane of focus, not focus, of exposure, then I'll be able to light it from one side, which is what I would do. When in doubt, light Erica. Don't worry about the dude. I'm assuming there's a dude. Could be, I'm only saying that because there's three of us and it's going to end up being Dave at some point. Um, all right, so. Back to this. No, let's do the thing. I think it's time, Seth. Yeah, all right. Because we have to ruin every one of these demos with something silly, <laughs> let's put this behind Erica. Does this mount to anything? Oh, I don't know. Does it? I believe that it is only a Bowens mount. However, I have seen that there are Adapters that adapt things to Bowens. So you could do that. And of course, there's other companies that make parabolic doodads. But if you want this one, you'd have to get some kind of a. I mean, it was made for yeah. This line. Yeah, unfortunately, you gotta. But I will say, if you just want this, like this light is like very. Is there be some plastic on this? <laughs> it's like brand new. This is a very inexpensive. This whole thing by itself is like. It is. Yeah, it's like. Yeah, I mean, this is, it's, you know, this is like when Erica spends one night out, you know, at the, at the restaurant. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> you are coming for me. <laughs> <laughs> she could consume that much sushi in, sushi in one set. I mean, maybe I could. <laughs> yeah, probably. This is going to be look extra. No, this is it. You're going to look great. I'm feeling it. <laughs> okay. The strip is not on. I just have it randomly pointed over there. All right, we're going to start with just the one light because this is the kind of thing we do. And you know, this is not in any of those photo books. We're kind of making it up as we go along. I'm going to set my camera to 5.6. The light is at, you take your notes. The light is at 164th point plus seven power. Not bad. Not bad. Oh, I guess we gotta go wider. Should I get up right up in your grill? Whatever. How deep is the parabolic reflector coming Oh, it's deep. <laughs> there it is. All right. Uh, three and three and a quarter feet. 
All right. All right. This is the moment of truth. Justice. Okay. Yeah, there we go. Oh, no, that didn't work very well. Not bad. Not bad. I think it's a little dark. I went wide. I said, should I go wide? Am I shooting JPEG? No. No, no. Okay, so, right. I mean, I'm, I'm kind of wide because I wanted to get this, like, in... Uh, Remember, the, it's going to change your perspective, right? If I go to, like, that, that was 24, if I go to 50, and I back up to get the same framing. Although I will say this is pretty cool. No, it didn't, but I was just looking there. <laughs> it's actually cool. When well, the light doesn't go off, it actually works. Oh, okay, hold on. Hold on. Guys. Right, well, I was going to use a light. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, at some point, you just got to use another light because, you know. Yeah, I don't want to fight it. I can't fight this. No, sorry. Yes. All right. It is. Remember, when all else fails, gimmicks. Gimmicks are the key. Um, how far back are you? Uh, oh boy. Oh. All right. It's a little bright. And also, the light's in the shot, which I knew was going to happen because I could see it, believe it or not. Yeah. All right. I wonder if the strip's not the best thing in the world for this. But I suppose I can go like this. Okay, so I, we're getting up. There's a few issues here. Number one, I'm lighting up the whole studio. <laughs> and that's the big one. So, and number two, the light was in the shot. So I'm going to tilt it down some so I don't get the light all over the whole studio, hopefully. Is that pointed at you? Where am I? Well, I mean, that's. Listen, if, if anybody knows if the light's pointed at. I mean, it's the model, right? Okay, so. Yeah, that should be good. There we go. That's a little better. That's good. I just don't like all that studio in the shop, but that's okay. That's what Photoshop is for. No, I'm just going to crop it. I'm gonna, this is going to be a square shot-ish. So I'm just going to leave room on both sides so I can crop it square. There we go. Now, because we're in Capture One, I'm going to come in here. I'm going to put a square crop on this. Right? That's a Daniel Norton preset. If you don't want this, you, know, you can buy that at danielnorton.presets.uk.co. All right? And now, when I shoot, it'll just automatically drop that in. So I'm going to basically... I can't set my camera to shoot square, but I have no idea how to do that. <laughs> I don't know how I was in JPEG, to be honest with you. God only knows how long I've been shooting JPEGs. They shouldn't even make cameras that shoot JPEG anymore. All right, there we go. It is like a giant hat. All right. So... Yeah. I could do that. Now, so of course, that was that. And remember, I started off really wide. I kind of like that. Oh, God. What happened? Back to the wide. Never do this kind of shot, guys. Wow. <laughs> She's like, this, this is that moment where you're like, where you wake up, it's like, oh, where was I last night? That is not what she looks like unless you get really close to her. That's exactly what she looks like. Wow. Too many. 
I'm just, you know, I was getting closer and further away to see the perspective. I think I actually like it by the door the best in my square crop. So I think my instinct was good. That's the shot, right? Oh, you want her? Well, I know I like this halo around her right here. Yeah, I like that it expen But we could try centering her. Why not? I'm never uh, opposed to trying things. Are you going to be able to stand in a box with heels on? I can do anything. Chicago style? Uh, no, too tall, right? Yeah, I think so. You got to go Chicago? LA. I did that wrong. I said Chicago the first time, which was right, and then I said Chicago again. Yeah. That's right. If you want to be cool or aggravating, you have to. All right. All right, I'm centering her as best as possible because I'm making the square shot. I think I might have to go wider on the lens. Oh, well, hold on. I'm just going to go wider. Oh. Uh, is that what she does? Oh, you mean like birth, birth of Venus? Yeah. All right, let's take the crop off, or I'll just move it rather. There we go. You too could make this shot with just Erica, a studio, some help, a giant parabolic. Well, there is somebody <laughs> There is absolutely no reason to put the parabolic behind the model, <laughs> except for that it's fun, and we just like to do silly things. All right, so on that note, let's get more serious. <sighs> Guys fooling around over there. Where do you want me? You can say we were. Oh, back on the thing? No. Okay. All right, where are we at? Let's do, let's finish with, I mean, I thought that was epic, but then that person crushed me. <laughs> Thank you, sir. How dare you do stuff? You only spent an hour with it in front of her. How dare you? How dare you do something fun? All right, let's go real close to the background. Let's do a hard, punchy shot to end with, because you know I like my hard, punchy shots with Erica. You like the hard, punchy All right, here we go. Giant box. What you see before you is a giant soft box. I will saw her in half. <laughs> I shall create a hard light with said box. Oh okay. Oh, look at you get all oh, got it. Yeah. I'm going to have to take some, uh, some ibuprofen before I go to bed. <laughs> all right. Up we go. All right. Oh, yeah. All right, here we go. Hard light. I'm going to turn off the strip bank. I'm going to take my, my light meter. We're going to get to F8 and stay there. Did not, but I think that's really interesting. Okay, I will not. Uh, I thought I figured something out, but I did not. All right, so I'm going to turn the light up. That's 64 and seven. I want to bring it up to 16. That's all very important. I hope you guys are taking notes. I'm going to bring it up to eight. What I'm trying to get here is F8, ish. We've been shooting at 9 all day, but I figure F8 is probably good here. We've also been shooting JPEG for some unknown reason. All right. I think I shot JPEG when I was doing that thing for you. <laughs> when you asked me to test the color thing, I think that's when I shot JPEG. Did you shoot all day in JPEG? Yep. All right. Well, luckily I get it right in camera, so... I feel like it's the beginning again. 
Don't even have to look. I know it's perfect. No, it did come in. There it is. It just made it square. Really? Really, guy that said I didn't know how to use it right? <laughs> yeah, there you go, right? Hard, punchy light from a giant source. Shot in raw. Not in JPEG. Not in JPEG. I could, I could shoot this with my phone. In, and then you wouldn't be able to see it because it wouldn't be tethered. Yeah, any, any final questions from the, uh, from the watchers of the video? Or live stream. One more time. All right, here we go. Break down of everything that's going on. I am using a Nikon Z62 lens is 24 to 70 f4. I'm using the Flashpoint. No. 600 Explore 600. Yeah, yeah, it's called a Flashpoint. Flashpoint Explore 600 Pro, non-TTL. Non the Glow 70-inch parabolic. No diffusion. Flashpoint has launched a new-ish Instagram. Check it out for all the latest Flashpoint news. So they're asking, they're asking what do you mainly use for? What is the exact? All right. So why would you use this kind of a light? Why would I use it? <laughs> it's probably all I can really answer. Typically, I'm using a parabolic when I want a light that that feels punchy. Feels like what you're looking at here. This is, this is the look of parabolics to me. Why a parabolic and not something else that gets that look? Let's say that you found a, let's say a beauty, a beauty dish won't do this, but let's say a beauty dish made that same exact look right here. The thing about the parabolic is that I can now move it, right? If I want to cover, let's say people mention more people, I want to shoot two or three people. I can back this up, right? Cover a larger amount of the set, zoom the, the head differently and change the power, right? I, or move it closer, right? I can, I can move it around. It gives you that ability. Typically, you're looking at the control of the kind of softness slash hardness of the light. That's why you want a parabolic for that kind of control. You've got it where you have it. You want to change the soft hard, or you're trying to look at a completely different look and you want to move the light around for whatever reason, you can adjust the hardness to match. That's why I would use it. Um, yeah, I, I find that that's what it's good for. You can yeah, it comes with diffusion. Um, I, I don't really use diffusion on a parabolic. I feel like it ends up being more like a softbox when you do that. I mean, yes, it's different, but I'm using this because I want this kind of specular punch, so I don't use diffusion, but yes, you can add diffusion to it. Yeah, if you, yeah. If you want to bring in Oh, oh, see, I said it was purpose, and I was out of focus. <laughs> Let me take another shot. I know, then that was the shot. I failed you. All right, here we go. If you want, uh, what is going on with the camera? Like, not. Yeah. Uh, ever since that fall, we've had some wackiness going on here. Maybe that's when I went to JPEG. Yeah. Uh, it's, now it's coming in, yep. I don't know. I think I'm having, oh, there it is. And the picture just appeared. There we go. Yeah, it was in your buffer. Just never weird. Yes. Yeah. It's, so yeah. You just disconnected again. Something weird's going on here. See, this is loose. Yeah, look. Yeah, why is that loose all of a sudden? Ever since the thing got jerked off the thing. Oh, wow. Oh, damn. Okay. Anyways, yeah, I think we either bent the cable or messed up my port. So that sucks. Anyways, uh, <laughs> all things being said and done, you would use it for those reasons. I mean, it, it has a certain look to it. They're not inexpensive when it comes down to it. I mean, it was this like $400 to $500? So it's a specific item. If you can rent them, I recommend it. But I mean, in the, in the world of Paris, this is pretty inexpensive. So if you like the look of it, it could be a worthwhile investment. It is pretty versatile. But I feel like I would use it for a very specific look. Like, I don't bust this out when I'm just making a regular portrait. I, I would take it out for more of a fashion style thing where I want that specularity, I want that contrast, but I still want my light to feel soft. 
specular is the opposite of diffuse. So specular is your bright end, your diffuse is, is uh, your, your other end. So specular would be like these highlights on her lips, how her skin is shiny here. Those are your specular highlights. The, this silver punchiness is going to bring those out, which adds contrast and gives a certain style and look and kind of glamour to it, if we will. Glamour. OK, other questions, thoughts, concerns? I'm still up. Okay. All right, guys. So uh, follow. you can follow Erica at Erica Lynn NYC. Erica Lynn NYC. I am Daniel Norton, photographer. You can follow me. Make sure you, if you haven't already, subscribe to Adorama TV and all that goodness. Ring the bell. And also jump over to Instagram and check out Flashpoint's new Instagram, uh, Flashpoint Lighting.